What's going on everybody? Welcome back to a new Brood War cast here for your daily dose of Brood War. We've got DeWalt in the top left hand corner once again. His opponent, let me shine a bit of friendly back and forth here between the two of them. He is indeed in Korea now. I saw that he just participated in the ACS. No spoilers, of course, for that. But it's not going to be cast in English, unfortunately. So you'll have to watch that in Korean uh, if you are indeed interested. Uh, that was just a precursor to the ASL qualifiers, which will be on February 3rd. Now, this game was played on the 24th of January, 2024. And I just saw the two names. I thought this should be a great match here. I know that Shine should be getting in ASL shape. And Dwalt has been practicing like a madman. We are here on Invader. And Dwalt going to be blocking the natural hatchery here. Just being a little bit annoying. He's waiting for the drone, but there was a pool thrown down. And guys, if you haven't noticed yet, we've got a little tab down here. And uh, we have some new tools. Look at that. Can start uh, annotating here on our screen. I don't know how much uh, use I'm going to get out of that, but I think we're we're doing a little leveling up right now, potentially. We got a forge fast expand here for Dewalt. Kind of excited about it, actually. Kind of excited. We'll be able to actually draw on the screen, and you guys will be able to see it. Uh, that came from. Uh, last KCM video I did where we were talking about the map and we couldn't draw anything on it. Well, Shun hooked me up with a program that will allow us to do that in the future. So thank you to Shun. And I'll make use of it in these replay casts as well. Hopefully show you guys a little bit more what I'm talking about when I'm explaining about map. Uh, or like attack paths or whatever. We'll, we'll see. We'll, f we'll find some way to make use out of it. Overlord here being sent across the map. I'm not sure what this second Overlord is for. Maybe he's going to put one in the front and this one will go into the main. I guess that is a good idea. Get that good information here as to what DeWalt is doing. DeWalt is getting good information here as well in the main by keeping this probe alive. Essentially, until there is Ling Speed, and we don't have Ling Speed on the way because we're about to start our lair. And the lair starts with no more Lings being produced. We've got a very respectful cannon here at the front. We've seen some Rodas players recently completely skip over this cannon and go directly into a Cybernetic Score, and it's very, very dangerous. Um, but if you have the probe hanging out here the whole time, it's possible. It is possible. It's just not very, uh, yeah, it's it's just very, very dangerous. Uh, you could die pretty much instantly. Um, if the Overlord is watching, I mean, I think it's not even worth it to try and do that. If the Overlord's not there and he's got no vision, you know he's got no vision of your lack of cannon, maybe it's okay to do it. But still, very, very dangerous. Now, I'm I'm a bit interested about these, these bases, the choice here from Shine. I know that this base, uh, it seems very good. But I don't know if it's better than taking this base right here as your third. Uh, it feels like... Hmm. It might be better. I, I don't know. I've been taking it up here. And things get really congested. It's actually hard to get your units... If you put, like, another hatch here, you know, you kind of block things off here. Your units tend to get stuck right there. Which I should use my annotation. Right here. They kind of, they can't go past, if there's a, something blocking you from going this way. Like, uh, if there's a hatchery right here. Then they just get stuck there basically forever. It's super, super annoying. But we'll see what he does. I'm going to be watching carefully here for Shine. What is he going to do um, with his hatcheries? How is he going to place hatcheries here to make it so he can 
you know, have a good defensive position and also not get his crap stuck in that little spot there. Temple Archives on the way. We've got one Corsair about to come across the map. We uh, don't have that probe out there anymore. It was picked off when the link speed finished, but he kept it alive long enough. And now the Corsair is going to take the path where uh, Hydras would be walking. They would be coming through here. So he's going to see that there's no Hydras coming along. And he will be able to scout everything out. He sees the extra hatches. Hey, he puts the hatches exactly like I put them. How does he stop things from getting stuck right there? I'm really curious. Because that always happens to me. Because the, the eggs will pop out down here a lot of the time. They'll block these, these spaces. And then everything just gets stuck right there. This is where I put my sunken colony too. I wonder if it's going to happen to him as well. Because I've had, I've lost games, multiple games, because I had this set up, and I had like seven, eight hydras stuck right there, and I couldn't, I just couldn't get them out. You know, I'm like microing hydras, dodging storms and stuff, and I'm like, okay, move, move, and then I'm microing, microing, and then fuck, they're still there, and then come back and, damn it, they're still there, <laughs> like I can't get them out. Rapidly clicking over and over and over again, and they just won't move. Like I have to move them, and then through the mineral line, and it's just a pain. Evolution chamber up here as well. That's interesting. Trying to make that uh, gap even smaller, but the DT is going to slip in. Hiding here in the back. He wants to get a drone. He will get one. Can he get a second? Two drone. Maybe a third. Three drone. Not bad. Not bad at all. Getting some damage with that first DT. Has to keep the Corsair back at home. He's actually going to start producing more Corsairs. Now we have Carapace on the way nice dodging out here from the corsair looked like he might have been losing that but that's just to keep it alive and two cannons here so he's fully aware of the potential for shine to go for that metalist transition he's even getting the third gas right now so he's gonna pop out a bunch of metas and try to pull a fast one here on dewalt but dewalt is very prepared he stopped ma making these, but he's making two more DTs. This kind of makes me think he's going to make a Dark Archon. If he stopped making Corsair, and he's making two DTs, probably we're going to see that. There it is, Dark Archon on the way. Very nice to see some more Dark Archon usage here versus Muta. It is so, so powerful if you can get that spell off. You can get the Maelstrom. And more and more Mutas are popping right now. Oh boy. This could be, uh... This could be strong. Oh, a Ling ran in and actually I think it saw this Dark Archon. I'm pretty sure it did. If it got to that point right there, it must have seen the Dark Archon. So, if Shine is aware of this, he'll have to start transitioning here. And he does start Muscular Augments, the... Transitionary Tech into Hydra. You have to get those upgrades rolling. Really nice block right here. So hard to get any units up this ramp to attack. But you've got three hatches worth of production that's probably not going to be able to get out of that base. Picking off some of these zealots. Bit of a strange decision to attack in there. Send the zealots out. You're going to be throwing away quite a bit of your army here, DeWalt. Uh, for not much gain at all. Our gateways going down in the main. And let's just zoom out a little bit here for a moment. Something's attacking. That's oh, just the egg there. Some scourge are coming in, but we should be taking this base maybe. Or are we going to take the top right base here as shine for our fourth base? It looks like the fourth up in the top right. I actually like this decision a lot. You're continuing to spread out in the same direction it's going to be a little easier to hold oh where is that maelstrom we don't have it oh maelstrom was not done he came in just before that was so risky and if he had maelstrom there all of those were gonna die like every single Mito was just dead there and he wouldn't have gotten anything from it but because maelstrom was a little late he manages to get in. I wonder if Shine has that like perfectly timed in his head where it's like 10 minutes. You can't possibly have Maelstrom because you have to upgrade Storm first or something like that. 
I wonder what it is that prompted him to do that because that seems like a major risk. You can see we've got full 10 mutilists that could have just been instantly destroyed had there been a Mael Maelstrom finish. And now Maelstrom is done. He wants to move out. He's only got two Templar though. With just two Templar, it's a little bit scary to take on these big waves of Hydras coming in towards the main now. Here he comes. I'm gonna try and break it here. We've only got one Corsair. Oh, immediately bombing that. Corsair goes down. We'll have to picture in picture here as the fight is much more important. Coming up here on the high ground. Wait, where's the mail? Some nice storms on a lot of these Hydras. I just getting broken here. This plus one upgrade will be denied. Oh, plus two, excuse me. Taking a pretty decent fight here is DeWalt getting up on top of all this stuff. Really breaking a lot of these drones as well. Shine is uh, losing so much right now and he could end up losing all three of these hatches. Another great storm there. Running through the storm now though. Diving on top of the dragons. Doing what you're supposed to. Which is targeting down individual dragoons. This base is going to fall with all three hatches, but look at back at home. The Nexus is going to end up going down. We have some Dragoons popping out, but I don't think they're going to be able to stop this Nexus from falling. Is the damage too much, though? We, I mean, we're losing three hatches, and we're only taking out one Nexus. I mean, it's one of two, but we can still produce off of all of our gateways, whereas the Zerg really can't produce much right now. Where is our... Dark Archon. Did we lose that? No, it went back home. Oh, he got the Maelstrom on these. Very nice. Getting that Maelstrom. And the Dragoons are going to be able to do a lot of damage. But Maelstrom does not last very long. So eventually, these will come out of that Maelstrom. Looks like he get the, got the majority of them, though. Well, fighting over here in the middle of the map once again. Oh, that's just Scourge there in the main part of the map. Oh, the Dark Archon. No, the Hero Dark Archon. He's making a run for it. Looks like he will survive, and these Hydra's are going to get picked off for free. They're just right-clicked on that Dark Archon. They're not going to end up getting it. Oh, it's so close. 9 HP. Will he be able to pick it off? No, 6 HP. It survives. This base in the top right is completely illegal. That should not be allowed to stay, but I don't think that DeWalt knows about it right now. He's remaking his Nexus. He's focusing on shutting down this next base over here, and I just don't think Shine has the production anymore. It really, that's what it really comes down to. He does have enough mining right now to build stuff. But he just does not have any production. Hydras are going across the map. They're going to shut down this uh, third base here. But his own fourth has been shut down. Or this base right here has been shut down. And we just need more hatches, man. We really need more hatches. We've got another one coming up here in the top right. If that base gets found out, though... This game is probably just going to end because I don't think Shine can protect it. Does he have Lurker? He really needs Lurker. There it is. One Lurker here. He's popping another round of Muta. Making Archons, though, on the side of DeWalt. So he's going to have another base coming up out here at the front. And he's sending a Zealot to the top right. Here it comes. He's going to spot it. But there are Lurkers being made here. And a Sunken Colony already in position. He sees it. He has to react here. Zealot going to run all the way around and maybe get a couple of kills. That's kind of hilarious. Will it get a kill here? Not quite. Not quite able to get that kill. Going to threaten the counter attack here so that it's a little bit scarier to take this fight. Ooh, flying in with the Overlord. I like that. Just to spot and see where the Dark Archon is and kind of avoid it with these Mutas. Is he going to come in and try to snipe the Dark Archon? That would be such a ballsy play. Is he going to go for it? He does. He tries it. Oh, no. Oh, Shine. Why? Why'd you have to try it? Of course, DeWalt is going to be paying attention. There's only 72 HP on that, so he could have killed it. I think it's just one hit from that Mutalisk squad, but <laughs> he flies in. DeWalt is watching, and all of the Mutalisks get wiped out. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. That was so much money. I mean, that's like... I don't, I don't know, like, was that 10 or 11 mutas there? So 10 lurkers, minus 10 lurkers, man. He's missing out on a lot of supply of lurker because of that play. And it looks like DeWalt's going to come up to the natural, and this could be the killing blow because, uh, yeah, we've got four suckins here and one lurker, but 
Uh, it's not going to be enough, man. Four Sunkins is... It looks like a really scary amount, but... Yeah, you can take that on. Okay, he's just going to turn around for now. We've got four cannons over here, though, uh, to defend this counterattack. Once he defends his counterattack, I think he'll just go to break the natural. Oh, another good storm coming down here. Some decent dodging, and this Archon probably is going to go down. One more storm is available, though. And DeWalt will hold on to this base. He's going to transfer his workers now. He's actually out of money in his natural, so he needs to transfer all of these workers over here, but... I think he's feeling still pretty darn good. The fact that he can see that there's no base here. He can see there's no base here. He knows that his opponent is stuck on three base. And he's going to be mining out here pretty soon as well. So we have to see something out of Shine. And all DeWalt is doing is staying in a holding pattern here. While he slowly works his way up to this fourth base on this high ground. And looks like coming up now he's going to take this base. So DeWalt has a location where he knows he can attack right now. This base is going to be his prime target. Another little counterattack coming through here. But way too many storms to deal with that. Trying to get in with these lurkers. Doing a pretty decent job. But because there's no observer. But we should have an observer coming around pretty soon. Where are they? I don't see any observers just yet. There's that one. But... Ooh, getting quite a few kills here. Getting three kills. There's the observer coming around. With the observer coming up, we should be able to deal with this with the Archon. The Archon. Oh, if he targets the probes, he could get a lot more. No, he's not going to target the probes here. Yeah, Archon is just going to push these down. Pretty decent upgrades here for DeWalt. Not really good upgrades for, uh, for, for Shine, but they're going to pop in here pretty soon. He's going to be 2-1 in just a second that'll be even upgrades to the upgrades of uh dewalt but then again dewalt will have those next upgrades coming in once again here pretty soon so you will be able to push those upgrades back a little bit more another storm here coming down very annoying stuff for shine to deal with he's trying to get in here and deal some damage at the edges of the base oh he could get a lot of probes here oh 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 big hit no second hit though that's unfortunate, and we're going to try and push up onto this high ground. This, again, is the target here for DeWalt. Oh, my God. Look at all those hydras just explode to the storm, and storm is a pretty good unit, guys. He's going to be able to break this high ground without much problem. The hydras are going to be sent up here, but to no avail. No way he can block this from going down, I think. Oh, he's coming in from behind with pretty big force. Yeah, we're going to hit this from multiple angles. Nice Maelstrom there. He should be able to throw a storm on that. And he does. Big, nice storm on that. And he is just going to route this entire army. Nothing that Shine can do. And GG, he taps out. Wow. An incredible game here from DeWalt. I think Shine kind of threw the game a little bit. Like, he wasn't in a good spot. But he would have been in a much better spot if he didn't try to snipe this dark archon this is definitely the hero of this game this dark archon he was the target of an assassination attempt but turned it around and gave his master a huge advantage by maelstroming those 10 mutilists that was a beautiful play by him and uh i mean if we had you know gone around and just snipe templar like maybe just avoided the dark archon because we knew where it was we could have avoided it you know we could have flown into the main or the natural and fly into the main again i mean there's only one cannon here just fly in you know start killing probes start you know kill this cannon uh start making a big disruption force the protoss player to come back with his army that was out here that would have been very annoying but instead he wanted to go for the high quality snipe there he wanted to go for the assassination attempt And DeWalt says, no. My Dark Archon must live on. He is needed for the next phase of this game. And got a great Maelstrom here as well. So that is it, guys. An awesome game. I was thinking about making a reference to Russians and assassination attempts. But I feel like that's a little bit too political. So I cut myself off. That's it for your Daily Dose of Brood War, guys. 
I'll see you tomorrow.